Assalamu alaikum, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Mat. Of course, I am your host, Calvin Muhammad, and I am here on behalf of Grandmaster Abdul Aziz Muhammad, the national trainer of the Nation of Islam. For those of you all who have not uh, been catching any episodes of Beyond the Mat, uh, let me give you a little rundown of why we do this particular program. Of course, you know that the National Training Corps has been going on now for 26 years strong. Of course, spearheaded by our brother, Grandmaster Abdul Aziz Muhammad, under the inspiration of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Well, after this year's success uh, of our virtual conference, which, by the way, we had more attendees in this year than we've had in any previous years of the 26 years of the National Training doing our virtual conference. It was decided, and of course, our brother, our national trainer of the Nation of Islam, wanted to make sure that we didn't have to wait an entire year to be plugged into the national training. And so, of course, what he wanted to do is make sure that we were putting information in front of you every single week. Number one, to ensure that you all knew that the national training was a very broad training platform. To some people, they only knew about the martial arts portion of the national training. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that you were aware of all of the training that took place at the national training conference that happens every year. And that training went anywhere from dignitary protection to disaster preparedness, uh, to running drills to protect you and your family. Uh, there were all sorts of trainings that went on from a uh, training on how to protect and preserve your credit, training on agriculture, training on critical communications, every aspect that we would need uh, that may help us to be better servants of our people, of our nation and of our family, that training has been provided at the National Training Conference. Which brings us to today. If you've been tuning in to all of our episodes, you might be looking saying, Brother Calvin, this looks a little strange today. You probably are wondering, where is your guest? Good question. And the answer is, today, you are the guest. See, this episode of Beyond the Mat is called, What Will You Do? What we're gonna do is we wanna engage you as the watcher, as the listener, those of you all who are part of the National Training Corps group and audience. We wanna engage you this time and we wanna see where your critical thinking skills are. To do that, we're gonna present you with a few scenarios. We want you to watch those scenarios and we want you to comment, comment in this video, let us know what you would do if you were in that situation. Now, this comes with the caveat, the situations that we're gonna put before you today have all been workshops that have been taught and trained in the national training. But we really wanna know where our minds lie when it comes to a crisis or a critical situation. So we're gonna to have to have an opportunity to view some of these critical situations, but I want to put something on our minds before we dive into the content for today. When we're looking at situations that we're gonna to view today, understand that traditionally we've been taught about this fight or flight methodology. And as they further studied the human brain, they understood that it existed more than just fight or flight. But there's one other critical aspect, and now they determine it to be fight, flight, or freeze. And I want you to remember that as you're watching this information and as you're watching these scenarios, and I want you to break them down in your mind. Think about the training that you've had. Think about the desire that you would have in order to survive some of the situations that you're going to see today. So we're gonna to dive right into it. And again, don't be shy. 
Go ahead and comment. Leave us what you're thinking is on what you would do if you were in the situation that you're going to see today. First up, we have a very serious scenario. Now, you're going to see a sister in the scenario, but I want you to put your mindset. It could be a brother. It could be a sister or it could be a child. It doesn't matter. But I want you to take a look and observe this very critical situation of a sister who was abducted in broad daylight in Brazil. Let's take a look at this scenario. The lady with the red car is about to be kidnapped. The two gentlemen you see in the picture have been watching her, following her, they've stalked her. She's more concerned about her shopping rather than being aware of what's happening in her immediate surroundings. And even if she is aware of these gentlemen, she doesn't perceive them as a threat because bad things don't happen to people like her. You can see now as she gets in her car, one of the kidnappers gets in the back seat. Why? Because the doors are open. At this point, he's most probably pulling a knife, pulling a gun on her, and she's panicking. Even though her car door is open and she could run and she could flee, she's panicked. She has no plan. She doesn't know what to do in this situation because bad things don't happen to people like her. This situation and many others could have been avoided with some basic situational awareness and some basic planning and preparation. It's not being paranoid to worry about your personal security. It's realistic. Your personal security, your life is your responsibility, nobody else's. Now that is a very serious situation. And it's not a rare situation. It's very, very, very common. I hope you observe everything in that scenario. The surroundings, the attitudes, the demeanors. Did you notice any bystanders in the background? This again, we in the national training, we have subject matter experts that have trained in detail on these situations. But we want to know, as an audience, as a protector of your family, whether you're a brother or a sister, whether you're a father or a mother, whether you're an aunt, an uncle, or just a good friend of someone, what would you do? How would you handle that situation? One thing I want to point out, and this is widespread knowledge when it comes to abductions, never, ever, under any circumstances, allow someone to take you to a secondary location. Your chances of survival decrease immensely when you allow someone to take you to a secondary location. I'm gonna say something, and it might shock a lot of you, but it needs to be said before allowing someone to take you to a secondary location, you would be better off fighting to the death. So keep that in mind. But what would you do? How would you handle the situation? I want to understand what you were thinking in terms of awareness. Could this person have been more aware? I want to understand what you're thinking in regards to a response. What could the response have been? When you saw the gentleman enter the car, understanding he had a weapon, what would have been an appropriate response given that situation? More importantly, you heard the narrator talk. Was this situation truly preventable? And if so, how could it have been prevented? These are very important things to consider, but it all boils down to what would you do? Now we're gonna move into a second scenario. This scenario, again, like the previous scenario, we've had training on this international training. As a matter of fact, uh, we had our brother, Brother Solaris, uh, who just recently uh, touched on dignitary protection. 
But as he pointed out, and if you haven't checked out that one, go to the official Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad's YouTube page, or you can go to his Facebook page, or you can go to the national training page, and you can find the interview with Brother Solaris. But he talks about what a celerity is, a, 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 a VIP is, and how we should view it. He starts off by talking about the most important dignitary being ourselves, but also your family is a dignitary. And how you treat yourself, how you treat the dignitaries that are around you all the time, if you are on a productive detail, that reflects on how you protect your person that you're responsible for. Now, this is an attempted assassination. I want you to take a look at it. I want you to observe it in detail. And we want to know especially if you're in the Nation of Islam, you've had training on this, but any organization, any person who's responsible for protecting someone else, we want to know, when you're viewing this situation, what would you do if you were there in this situation? Let's take a look at this attempted assassination. It was a shot almost heard around the world. As millions watched a man storm a stage in Bulgaria, and then point his gun at a prominent opposition politician live on television. Police took Akhtai Enamamedov, 25, into custody after he pulled the gun on Ahmed Dogan, the leader of the Movement for Rights and Freedom, MRRF, a party supported by Muslim voters, including some Turks in Bulgaria. Police now say Enema Medov was holding a gas pistol that was loaded with pepper spray, with two other bullets being simply noisemakers. He pointed the gun at Dogen's head during a party congress in the capital, Sofia, but failed to shoot. He was tackled to the ground and beaten by guards and party members as TV cameras continued to roll. When asked why he did it, he said he wanted to send a message that Ahmed was not untouchable. Wow, that was a very close call. And let's thank Allah that the actual weapon malfunctioned, number one, and that the speaker himself was on his toes. But I hope you observed the entire video. I want to know, how would you have handled it? What went right? What went wrong? Comment on this video, let us know. I want you to think about what it must have took for the assailant to even get that close. Number one, you saw the response. Was it an organized response or was it a knee-jerk emotional response to the assailant? Should they have been maybe focused on other things as well as disarming the assailant? What would you have done? What would you suggest could have been done to maybe bring about a different outcome. Let's think about the awareness. Do you think the awareness of the security was where it should have been? Do you believe that there was proper preparation? Do you believe that the response was appropriate or could it have been different? And altogether, do you think this thing could have been 100% avoided? And if so, how? This is very critical. As a member of the Nation of Islam, who's worked countless security details, this strikes home to me because I can observe and see a lot of areas that can be addressed. But we wanna know, as someone who witnessed this, someone who observed this, how would you have handled it? What would you have done to ensure a different outcome? Next up, and the last of the scenarios that we will view, this is quite interesting. This is a common occurrence in many cities across the United States, especially when it comes to black people. What you're getting ready to witness in this last scenario is a young man and his wife coming home and there's an attempted robbery that is taking place, an attempted armed robbery that is taking place. I want you to pay close attention to this 
because out of all of these scenarios, this is very likely to happen to a lot of us. Pay close attention to the environment. Place, pay close attention to the surroundings. Pay close attention to the response. Pay close attention to the awareness. What is it that you would do differently? Let's take a look. Now to a Fox 6 exclusive, a shootout during an attempted robbery all captured on camera. Aaron Maben spoke with the man who was shot twice during that incident on Sunday. <laughs> Surveillance video shows a shootout near 48th and Hampton Sunday night. It's disheartening for uh, me and for, you know, anybody in the community. This 39-year-old victim didn't want his identity shown, but does want his story shared. I don't hurt nobody. I don't do anything to nobody. You know, it's, it's been very, you know, traumatizing. He says the trouble began when he and his girlfriend arrived home and a suspect with a gun came out of nowhere. I automatically reached inside the car and put the gun pointed to his head but I seen that he had the gun pointed to her head with the trigger. So I said, if I shoot him, he gonna shoot her. He went around the vehicle, saw another suspect and started shooting. The victim is seen wearing a bulletproof vest. He says he regularly wears one. By me being over on a uh, 48th and Hampton, you know, it's a very dangerous area. I feel like, you know, I'm in a war zone. So at, at, at the point, I'm going to protect myself. After his girlfriend was briefly taken away from the vehicle, surveillance shows her walking with her arms up. So at this point, of course, I'm going to think I'm targeted. They was in the bushes before I even pulled up. Milwaukee police say the circumstances leading up to the shooting appear to be robbery related. The victim, who says he does not have a concealed carry license, was shot twice. <laughs> and believes he wounded one of the suspects. I do believe the people will get caught. The victim tells Aaron he isn't sure why he was targeted. He said he shared the video with detectives. The Milwaukee Police Department said today this is an ongoing investigation, and if anyone has information, to please give them a call. Milwaukee Wow. A very intense situation. Situation that could strike home for many of us. Maybe some of us have been in that situation before, but we want to know, what would you have done? How would you have handled it? Take a look at everything. Did taking note of the environment, of the surroundings, could that have changed the outcome any? Take a look at the response. Here's something that I, I want to report, uh, that I want to comment on, on that video. Again, a lot of people can say a lot of different things on what they would have done. Um, but something that I want to point out as a member of the Nation of Islam, some of the basic training that we receive uh, could have quite possibly made this situation resolve in a different way. So one of the things that I know sometimes we take for granted for our training in the Nation of Islam is how we're taught uh, to park our vehicles. We're always taught to bag into a parking spot, even if that's our garage or if our driveway at home. Now, when you refer back to this scenario, making that adjustment alone, that one adjustment alone could have changed possibly the outcome. But I don't know. Do you agree with that or you disagree with that? But in my opinion, it could have changed some things. Number two, as men, we are taught that we should always get the door for our wives, our daughters, the women in our lives. Think about that. What if that sister in that video made sure she waited until the brother got the door and the brother actually got the door for her? Would she have been in the same situation? Uh, that she was in. Just some things to think about. But it's also some things to think about on the training that we already have. But we want to know, what would you have done? How would you have handled it? And particularly to the brothers, I want to know how you would have handled that ending. As you notice, the brother was uh, firing at one of the uh, robbers. 
his weapon jammed, and it caused him to retreat. And in that retreat, uh, things escalated. His wife became a hostage. I want to know, brothers, what would you have done in that situation? Now, that's the last of the scenario uh, that we're going to take a look at for this week. But periodically, we're going to come back with this topic, showing you scenarios and asking you, what would you have done? Now, we're going to have people come on this show who will train in this particular area. As a matter of fact, this year's national training uh, that took place, we had Sister Sierra uh, out of uh, the Texas area. She talked about drills because we want to show you home invasions. And she talked about the drills that her and her family go through. Uh, we talked about different ways in which you secure your home. Uh, there were many things that were covered, but we're gonna cover these scenarios, but it's important that we start to think in this day, in this time that we are living in, what will we do? I wanna take a comment from C. Joe Steve Muhammad. Added national training while doing a workout with the brothers. This is one of the earlier national trainings. He said that in a crisis situation, you could only fall back on what you have trained for. And if you have not trained for anything, you have nothing to fall back on. We come full circle to the fight, flight, or freeze response. The thing about it is fighting and flighting, they are natural human responses. Now, I don't want you to think that a flight response is automatically a cowardice response. It can become a cowardice response when you have the responsibility to defend and protect someone. If you're responsible for protecting your family, if you're responsible for protecting a principal, if you and your brothers or your sisters are in a situation, a flight response can be cowardice. But if you're in a situation where you're alone and your best option for survival is to retreat so that you can and stay around a little longer, that is a natural response. So when you look in the wild and the gazelle flees from the lion, you don't call the gazelle a coward. Uh, you say that that was an appropriate response. But when you see things in nature, like something as small as a badger who is approached by wolves, if that badger is with a female badger in particular, if she's with her cubs, she will fight to the death to defend those cubs. Flighting is not an option. But then you have the response of freezing. Freezing is interesting because when you freeze in a crisis situation, that freeze occurs because you are stimulated to the point where your, your neural system is overloaded and you can't make a cognitive decision. You are over-processing the cost or repercussion for fighting. You're over-processing the cost or repercussion of fleeing because in nature, sometimes to flee, if you are faced with a, if a, there's a prey faced with a predator like a cheetah, when you show those animals your back, they will automatically attack and pounce on you. That's why in certain situations, they tell you when you come across certain animals, don't run because as soon as you turn around and show them your back, it triggers the natural predatory response. There's a window that you have to flee. And then there's, once that window is closed, you have to fight. But in freezing, sometimes people are, overwhelmed, they're over-processing. If they fight, what could happen? They're over-processing. If they flee, what will happen? And then, so they freeze. And you know, you've heard it uh, sometimes like a deer in headlights. 
Well, what can overcome that freezing response is when you and I train. It is why in the military, things are taught by drill, repetition. That's why in the dojo, things are taught by drill, repetition. We are taught in the Nation of Islam that drill is the exercise of the gods. And we say that because when you drill something over and over and over and over and over again, that response becomes a subconscious response to where when you are faced with the crisis situation that resembles the situation that you have constantly trained and conditioning for, you are not in control of that response and your body automatically defaults to muscle memory. Your body automatically defaults to the subconscious response. And before you know it, you are responding to protect and defend yourself. And that is why we train. That is why the national training is put together to give us options, to give us scenarios, and more importantly, to give us training opportunities to when we go back to our homes, that we can continually drill on these things to ensure that an outcome will be in our favor. Once again, if you have not subscribed to the original, the original and the official Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad's YouTube page, if you have not subscribed to the Facebook page, Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad and NOINTC, the national training page, both on Instagram and on Facebook, please stay tuned. We're going to bring you more training. But this week, this has been what will you do brought to you by Beyond the Mat. I want you to think about these situations. May Allah continue to bless you all. Assalamu alaikum.